This is NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Whelan and by Hercules Tires. Now, with a look at local, regional, and international NASCAR racing, here are Hannah Newhouse and Kyle Rickey. Welcome to NASCAR Coast to Coast here on the Motor Racing Network. It is Wednesday, May 29th, and I am Hannah Newhouse here in MRN's Concord, North Carolina location, joined once again always by Kyle Rickey up in Connecticut. Kyle, it was a hot weekend here as NASCAR took to the uh, Coke 600 weekend. Did the weather hold up for you guys up in Connecticut? Finally, uh, we got some good weather up here in, in Connecticut and in, in the Northeast. Most of the short tracks up here got their race programs in, had a great night of racing at the Stafford Motor Speedway. The Seekonk Speedway had their thrill show on Saturday. Monadnock Speedway finally got a race program in as well up in New Hampshire. So uh, all is well uh, as far as Memorial Day weekend was concerned. And, and hopefully this trend now continues into the month of June. Yeah, it's supposed to be hot around here. I know that for this up and coming weekend. Um, high 90s all week so if you're headed to the racetrack make sure you stay hydrated whether you're a driver or a fan because it's going to be hot this weekend but for NASCAR regional and international touring they had the past weekend off no action there lots of local racing but it's a busy weekend coming up for those teams um, as the modifieds go to Seekonk you've got the NASCAR Euro at Brands Hatch, Canaan East at Memphis and Pinty's at Jacasa. so crazy schedule for NASCAR regional and international this upcoming weekend. Yeah, we have nothing to really watch as far as that realm is concerned. Obviously, this past Sunday, we were all watching Monaco, Indy, and Charlotte. But as far as the regional and local levels were concerned, not a lot of racing. Uh, and now they're all back in action this week. Speaking of hot, I believe you were at Memphis last year, and I believe it was fairly warm on that occasion, if memory serves me right. Oh, yes. That was my first trip to Memphis, and I was very excited. And I remember walking into the racetrack that first time, and now, mind you, I'm a West Coaster, so I am not used to humidity as a whole and like ever. And then we went to Memphis and oh my gosh, the humidity index was insane. I commend those drivers. It was extremely hot, looking to be a similar forecast as far as warm weather this weekend. So um, definitely will be interesting to see how that heat plays out because ugh, humidity, it's just so sticky. And, and it messes with the hair, so they tell me. Yeah, well, you see, I always just go with the hat and the braid. I obviously put a lot of effort into my hair, and I'm pretty sure it actually looked very similar to this at Memphis last year, so what can I say? I've noticed. I've noticed. Hey, before we continue to talk about uh, what's coming up, I want to know how your first experience at the Indy 500 was this past weekend because you were there. Yeah, it was definitely interesting. I have been to, obviously, uh, Indy Indianapolis Motor Speedway before, with NASCAR, been there for the Brickyard, but I was always in and out in 24 hours, had never been to an IndyCar race, let alone the 500, so um, took it all in, went in at 5.45 with the uh, TV broadcast crew, we got in super early, and I wasn't working, I was just a fan, but they put the cannon off at 6 a.m., people flooded in, they were tailgating at 6.45, and I was like, what is going on, and so we went up to the stands to watch the race, and I mean, it was just a crazy experience, I truly believe that when people say nothing is like the Indy 500, they are right. I mean, it was just an incredible experience. People watching was on point. I'll tell you that much. But, no, super cool. Glad to glad to add that one to my books and take my rookie strips off, stripes off for next year. It, it is an event that is on my bucket list as well. I have yet to go. And I want to do it right. I want to go for carb day and I want to go for pole day and, and all of the racing in and around Indianapolis during the month of May at IRP and – and uh, some of the dirt tracks that are located in, in, in the vicinity of Indianapolis. Just a lot of stuff going on that entire week. Yeah, we got out to the fairgrounds for the Hoosier 100 as well. Missed the little 500. Um, did some exploring around Indiana instead. So it was cool to get to experience all that carb day as well. But we get back to NASCAR and regional uh, international, like you said, this up and coming weekend. Some more news broke in the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour. Big news. They will be returning to Martinsville in 2020. Kyle, is your modified heart happy? Uh, in fact, within 10 minutes of the announcement, the track tweeted me saying, uh, here, this better be the announcement that you've been waiting for for quite some time. I can't wait. Friday, it's right off, fresh off the press here. Friday, May 8th, 2020, the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour will race for 200 laps under the lights at Martinsville Speedway, their first trip there since Bobby Santos the third won there back in 2010. I am happy, but then there's part of me saying, 
what took so long. Obviously, uh, Martinsville and Modifieds have been a staple uh, together for so many years. Uh, some of the best Modified races that uh, ever took place happened at the Martinsville Speedway, part of the old Dogwood 500, Richie Evans and Jeff Bodine and, and Brett Bodine, Greg Sachs, uh, all finding success at the Martinsville Speedway and glad to see it uh, all coming full circle next year. Yeah, but I, yeah, I have yet to see the Modifieds at Martinsville, but I remember I mentioned it last year on our well, broadcast, I actually. Answer, you were like eight, so. Yes, well, that's true. <laughs> true. I mean, I think if it was 10 years ago, I would have been 12, so close. Okay. Close. It was close. Yes. But, uh, no, that'll be cool to look forward to uh, seeing that next year. I'll put that one on my calendar is when I have to go to. But, like we said, lots of action this upcoming weekend. Kane and East back slated. We'll have – Canaan East and West director Chris Wright on the show a little bit later to talk about everything that's happening in that series as well as maybe discuss the merger coming in 2020 with those series. But up next, we have a driver from Canada, Taylor Thring, to talk about her action at Sunset Speedway as well as what she has going off the track as well here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. Whelan designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights, white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for automotive, aviation, and mass notification industries worldwide. Every part of every Whelan product is proudly designed and manufactured in America and is tested on site to meet the toughest industry certifications. On the road, in the air, and around the world, Whelan is trusted to be seen, trusted to be heard, trusted to perform. Get your tickets for the ultimate NASCAR Summer Festival June 27th through June 30th. Racing, music, and a carnival for the whole family. All at Chicagoland Speedway. And this year, we're kicking off the first annual Barbecue Smokedown with tastings, demos, and barbecue competitions. Get tickets to the Camping World NASCAR Weekend at ChicagolandSpeedway.com. Here's your chance to win a set of your very own Hercules tires. Go to HerculesTires.com slash MRN. Simply register, and each month we'll give away one set of tires. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading mileage coverage to get you wherever you need to go, no matter where the road takes you. Register now for your chance to win a set of Hercules Tires at HerculesTires.com slash MRN. Hercules Tires, ride on our street. Back to NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Whelan and by Hercules Tires. Here are Hannah Newhouse and Kyle Rickey. Short track racing has kicked off all across the country as well up in Canada. Um, one of those tracks being Sunset Speedway. And we're joined by a driver there who's made a name not only on the racetrack, but off the racetrack with a campaign she started. Taylor Thring, first off, thanks for coming on NASCAR Coast to Coast with us. Yeah, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Now, let's start off here with your history in racing a little bit. I know you've been a mini stock driver up at Sunset Speedway. Talk about your racing history at Sunset and maybe where it all started for you. Yeah, well, for the last 40 years, my family has been building and racing cars here in Canada, whether it be modified challengers, late models, to go karts, which is where I started when I was eight years old. My dad, my grandfather, all my uncles did it, so it was kind of just a who wants to do it next to take over the shoes for the Thring family. But uh, my dad retired in 2008 from the Axe Late Model Series, and I actually got put into go-karts and raced go-karts till I was 16 and then got put up into the mini stock division at Flamborough Speedway first. And then two years ago, I made the switch on over to Sunset, which was probably the best decision I've ever made for my stock car career. <laughs> I love Sunset Speedway. There was a few of us here at MRN that made the trip over to Sunset a couple of years ago when we were racing at the Canadian Tire Motorsports Park with the NASCAR Gander Outdoors Truck Series. Fantastic facility, fantastic fields of cars, great people as well. I just want to know if you guys are ever going to run again this year because it seems like every time I look at you guys' website, uh, you rain out. Uh, weather has certainly been an issue for a lot of racetracks here in the States this year, but certainly for you guys up north of the border in, in Ontario. Yeah, it's been crazy up here. We've been uh, trying to race for about a month now and only got one full night in. So it really sucks to be up here because you guys obviously race a lot longer than we do, have a lot longer season before and after. We only get 
three, four months if we're lucky. So, yeah, it's it's been uh, a tough time trying to get races in the past couple weeks, but the weather looks like it's supposed to be clearing up, so we got to cross our fingers and hope for the best because we haven't had the best luck, that's for sure. <laughs> Well, hopefully we'll send some of this sunshine and heat that we have in the Charlotte area up your way. Because let me tell you, I walked into the studio today and it was hot outside and sunny. So please, you can have some of it because I do not do well in the heat. But um, <laughs> let's talk a little bit about some of the action that you've had off the racetrack. Actually, you started a campaign a couple years ago called Burn Out the Bully that was a campaign to stop bullying in the school. And you actually have a very personal experience with you that striked the notion for that campaign. Talk about how that all started for you. Yeah, so I actually live in um, Burlington, Ontario, just outside of Toronto. And uh, the school that I went to for a couple of years, I obviously, uh, everybody knew that I was a race car driver. And uh, I come from a family that just always supports you and doesn't really have, you know, bad bad things behind them and I always had people there to make sure that what I wanted to do was going to happen if I worked hard and tried for it so in the 12th grade I decided to take part I decided to partake in sorry a food drive that I actually uh, was involved in through hockey for the prior years before that and it was just a coincidence that at the high school I was attending they were actually the school where the weigh-in night for the food drive took place. And uh, the people that I went to school with didn't really do their research as to that I was doing it on my own and not partaking with the school. Long story short, that uh, escalated very quickly. People were accusing me of taking all the credit for it and just upset that I was posting on social media about all the food I was raising and being able to donate but they again they didn't know that it was just uh for my race team and uh then a couple weeks later we had the weigh-in night and at an assembly that the school had it all started because somebody accused me in front of the whole school it kept on getting worse and worse you know uh teenagers (laughs) they like to use social media best way to get the word out so that's what happened but in a negative way unfortunately And um, it progressed a lot worse. It, again, went on social media. Then they actually hit my truck in the school parking lot. They took the front fender off of it and then showed up at my house. They found out where I lived. And so I was obviously directly affected by this. My mental health was not in the right place. I actually took a year off racing the summer that this happened. And I was just uh, very lost if I want to find the proper words to describe it. But, um, yeah, the social media thing really kicked off, and that was probably the most hurtful thing for me was having people – like, no one would say anything in person, and people are obviously a lot more confident sitting behind a computer screen, unfortunately. So with all that happening, I created Burnout the Bully. And it actually – I'm going to give a shout-out to Jerry from Motorsport Alley, which is a photographer uh, up here in Canada – he was doing a photo shoot with me for women in motorsports and he looked me dead in the eye a month after I got taken out of school and he was like, Taylor, you can either like this can make or break you. You can create a good cause and try to spread the word or, or you can sit here and dwell like you are right now. And I think that really opened my eyes as to the platform that I already had because I'm a race car driver and the following that I had on social media and stuff like that, I had a a built-in platform for me to make a difference. And I decided to use social media, which is where I got targeted the most, and spread a positive light on such a negative issue that impacted me directly. So Burn Out the Bully is a hashtag that I uh, encourage people to use on social media to, again, set a positive light on such a negative issue. I sell shirts, sweaters, stickers, uh, race fans, a lot of drivers up here. All, have all over their cars to show the fans in our sport that the people that they look up to are trying to put an end to such a horrible topic. And, and like you mentioned, bullying has changed, un- unfortunately, uh, and, and still exists over the years uh, with the advent of the Internet. 
about uh, two decades ago. Where can people go to learn more about you and, and Burn Out the Bully online? Well, I'm actually in the middle of a uh, website revamp, but for right now, my Instagram, Twitter, Facebook pages are where I post a majority of the stuff. So if you want to find out more information, you can go to Thring Motorsports on, uh, again, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. My personal page is where I post a lot of stuff, too, which you can follow Taylor Thring on Instagram as well. And then probably the most important page where I post the most about my racing, Burnout the Bully, is the Thring Motorsports on Facebook. But we have all, um, all social media accounts on every platform with a Burnout the Bully uh, account. So anything you want to know about will be up on there. <laughs> Definitely cool that you're able to use that platform as someone who – I think you and I are very similar in age, and so, I mean, it wasn't that long ago that I was in high school, so you get to see firsthand um, how unfortunate and how cruel people can be, so I, I'm, it's awesome to see what you're doing and how you're able to use your racing platform to take that negative experience and, and push something better. Now, back to the racetrack, though, you know, what are your, what's your 2019 season look like if you guys ever get it underway with Mother Nature? Well, hopefully she plays into your guys' favor here soon. Yeah, that's the key part of that is if Mother Nature play, <laughs> plays in our favor. But for 2019, I actually am – I got hired by the Lucas Oil Sportsman Cup Series, which is a traveling late model series up here. And um, I am their uh, PR representative for this year. They have eight races all around Ontario, which cuts my race schedule down by eight nights, although I still do get to do – 10 races at Sunset Speedway. About four of those have been taken out already because of rain dates. So, unfortunately, uh, my season keeps getting shorter and shorter. But we plan to do big invitational races down here, like the Velocity 250 event, possibly on Autumn's Colors, which is the last race of the season up here in October, Thanksgiving weekend. There is also a show at Sobble Speedway that we plan to go to and just regular nights at Sunset in we were originally planning to uh, do a points case, but with my career and uh, growing up, you got to put your career at hand first. So that's what I decided to do while still having fun. <laughs> a final question for you uh, about the mini stock division at Sunset. Talked earlier about how we went there a couple of years ago. Great class, great fields of cars. Uh, Dylan Holmes currently leading the championship standings by one point over another female competitor at the racetrack in Samantha Shaw. From your seat, how tough is that class at uh, at Sunset? You know what? Everywhere you go the up here, the mini stock division is growing and growing. I got into mini stock racing uh, almost four years ago, and every single year there's more better car counts, more competitive drivers, and people just coming out of nowhere with amazing equipment and knowing what to do. So, like this year especially, you talked about Dylan Holmes, Samantha Shaw, you have Tyler Seaboyer, and the the list can go on and on depending on what track you're in. Like you have traveling people a lot that come on regular race nights. You have Andy Camras, Kevin Bridge, which are names that I can just throw out that you probably don't know, but to a mini stock driver <laughs> up here, you get scared every single time you see them on the register list for the night because you know that you won't be able to beat them. But from my seat, it is definitely a competitive field. It is a class that is uh, obviously forgotten about a lot because it's not a late model, not a Thunder car, not a pro late, limited late, whatever, uh, modified, whatever class you want to come watch. But it's definitely competitive, and you need to have everything together in order to make a good name for yourself. And you got to be organized and work on your setup and drive fast every single lap or else you're going to be left behind. That's for sure. <laughs> well, hopefully you guys get some racing underway and you get those handful of dates, get to get back behind the wheel before you take on that PR role. Well, Taylor, thanks so much for coming on and hanging out with us today. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. It was awesome to talk and I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. Awesome. Taylor Thring, a sunset driver and campaign for Burnout the Bully. But when we return, we'll have Kanan East and West director Chris Ride on to talk about the upcoming season here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. 
Get your vehicle ready for summer during Murray AC Month at O'Reilly Auto Parts. Whether you need a full AC repair or a charge on your system, you'll find special offers on everything from AC compressors to refrigerant. Stay cool this summer. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today. Better parts, better prices every day. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Whelan designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights, white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for automotive, aviation, and mass notification industries worldwide. Every part of every Whelan product is proudly designed and manufactured in America and is tested on site to meet the toughest industry certifications. On the road, in the air, and around the world, Whelan is trusted to be seen, trusted to be heard, trusted to perform. Three, two, one. The Firekeepers Casino 400, Sunday, June 9th at Michigan International Speedway. NASCAR's most entertaining track. There's tons to do with the whole family, like camping, live music, fireworks, and more. Tickets for as low as $39. Admission for kids under 12 is half price with a free pit pass, courtesy of Henry Ford Allegiance Health. Michigan International Speedway. You don't get it until you get here. Visit mispeedway.com for tickets. Back to NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Whelan and by Hercules Tires. Here are Hannah Newhouse and Kyle Rickey. Both the NASCAR Canaan Pro Series East and West now have a handful of schedule or a handful of races under their belt in the 2019 schedule, but plenty of more racing action is slated for both of the series. And we're joined now on the guest line by the director of those series, Chris Wright. Hey, Chris, thanks for coming on today. Thanks for having me. Glad I could join. You've had a pretty busy schedule this year being the director of both the East and the West Series. How do you balance such a full schedule with that? I mean, you're cross-country every other week. Um, it's it's actually, I mean, my my adult life, if you will, I've traveled for, with race teams, so the traveling part of it is is not anything that's new to me um but the it, it is balance balancing it is is a challenge at times obviously we're getting into the heat of the season now uh starting with memphis this week and immediately go to colorado next week and then back to thompson and back to sonoma and up to portland or uh, roseburg oregon i should say so yeah it's uh it's entertainment at times and you get plenty of frequent flyer miles, <laughs> I am sure. Every uh, other week, it seems like you're going to head out to the West Coast. You mentioned Memphis this weekend. Um, back into the heat, as you mentioned. A hot one there a year ago when the series and NASCAR returned to Memphis, uh, Memphis International Speedway. How important was it to get that track back in kind of the NASCAR realm after the, the facility hosted, you know, Gander Truck and, and Camping World or uh, Xfinity Series races for so many years? Um, Memphis as a competitor was always one that I was always fond of. We were fortunate to have good runs there. So it was, uh, it was important for the series and it was important for NASCAR or is important for NASCAR to, to be at Memphis. Uh, the, the fans there are, are, are very, very intrigued and involved with the race. And, uh, we have some, uh, some, uh, functions that we do prior to the event, and and that one of those is Friday night, uh, leading into the weekend. So it's it's a, it's a, a very enjoyable experience, and Dana Landry, Landry and everyone at Memphis do a nice job there. Now, one of the storylines that's been followed now, both on the Canaan East and West Circuit, is another driver trying to pull the double on the points. We saw Noah Gregson try it a couple years ago, followed by Todd Gilliland, and this year, unexpectedly. Derek Krause now holds the points lead in the East and the West series. How difficult is it for a driver to be competitive on both the East and West coast? Um, it is, it's a challenge is, I mean, it's a challenge for the teams and it's also a challenge for the, the, the drivers, uh, as well. I, I, I personally feel that it's probably the bigger demand, is on the team and team owner, I should say, as far as scheduling and with uh, with Bill's team being based out of Sacramento, California, um, they don't they don't have a team here uh, that they or a shop here, I should say, that they work out of. I mean, I, Derek is a very talented individual um, and does does a does a great job in the seat. So I, I think probably for a driver. 
uh, leading into the event, knowing knowing what they're going to and what facility they're going to, and the different different uh, things that go on at that racetrack, whether it be tire fall off or whether tire stays with you for the long haul. It, th- those are the things that they would need to prepare for. Like I said, the team owner, probably the the, the front side of it, it has a pretty good demand on, placed on them. That team owner, like you mentioned, Bill McAnally, and it will be fun to see if Derek can pull off the double uh, for the first time. Uh, Hannah mentioned Todd Gilliland has tried it. Noah Gregson, the first to try it a few years ago. Want to talk about double headers for a moment. Uh, Obviously, will be much of the conversation this weekend for the NASCAR's National Series as we go to Pocono. And obviously, Pocono will host the first Cup Series double header next year but it's something that we have seen in the last few years in the nascar kane and pro series and i think all of which have happened on the same night most recently at south boston in the east tucson in the west uh, is this uh, first off how do you feel double headers have been working out for these teams and, and secondly is this something that we could see more of um as as schedules continue to develop uh, in the future um, at a, at at the touring level of racing, I mean it, it's it's uh, everything that we do is is for our fan base and how how to accommodate those uh, those that join us and and whether they join us or join us on on the tape delays in our case with NBCSN or, or fans choice, um, it, it is a very intriguing. Um, I, I, there's a lot of things that are that are good on the concept and there's some challenges that come along with the concept. I mean, as far as to with K and N and ARCA going into 2020, um, I, I don't, I, I guess that could go either way um, because there's, there's been a huge amount of uh, uh, resources and time put into Merging the, again the Arca Arca Menard series as well as K and N to to run the ten events next year. So for for uh, the stock car touring, if you will, I, I think that's going to come into play. Uh, obviously, it will come into play. So where the balance for East and West shake out, there's there's just been a lot of um, a lot of time put into how the schedule is going to look and, and the venues that we're going to go to. Um, I, I think that it's um, the Pocono with them handling it is it, rather than two consecutive races on the same day, which would be impossible with 500 mile races, um, impossible demands for a driver um, for some, for others, maybe not, but obviously some have done the Indy, Indy Coke 600 double and that was 1100 miles. So, I'm not saying it's 100% impossible, but uh, with it being two different points races, uh, doing that on the same day would be be a pretty good challenge with that distance of race. You got to be a little bit crazy to do 1,100 miles in one day, if you ask me. But hey, (laughs) credit credit to them that do it. Um, On the topic of scheduling, something that has been exciting for me this year is to see Phoenix back on the schedule for the K&N West. Um, and the finale after it's been absence for a while. Um, how cool is it to have the Kane and West back at Phoenix as well as back on a Cup weekend? Because I love that racetrack. It's it's important for it's important for the uh, Kane and series, and and it's important for uh, for the drivers and and teams as well because the uh, at the end of the day, um, most if not all the drivers that that run with us are are typically looking and striving to advance uh, and Phoenix is one of the tracks that they would see in their future. So I think that it's important to have national venues and, and Phoenix um, is, is one that, that certainly accommodates that and, and to end the season at, at Phoenix is uh, at ISM is, is going to be very good for everyone as well. So i uh, certainly looking forward to it. And I actually did a site visit, uh, whenever I went to Tucson, and I haven't been been back since the uh, since the remodel, and wow, the place is amazing. And um, Julian and her staff have been, done a phenomenal job there. 
and uh, Julie actually came down to to spend the weekend with us at Tucson for our Canyon West event. So it was fun to catch up with her and looking forward to going back for sure. We've been there twice now since the remodel, and I still drive through the tunnel and go to where or try to go to where our old MRN compound was and obviously can't get there with all the new fencing and garage space. It, it's just a habit. It's <laughs> taking some time to get used to the new footprint of ISM Raceway. One of those young drivers hoping to race on the one mile national stage down the road is Haley Deegan. And, and she has made quite the impact in NASCAR's K&N series over the last year and a half. You're working with her as the series director. You see her both in the East and the West. How big of an impact has she had at that level right now? Um, she, I think it's not just at our level. She's, she's, um, she's made a huge impact. She's, she's a very talented young lady. Um, and I suspect that she'll go a long ways in, in everything that she strives to do. Um, I, I think a lot of it's fair to say that half the battle with, with the industry that we we are in is balancing those things that come come your way, whether it be uh, sponsor requirements, whether it be driving requirements, the on and off the racetrack, balancing those two is, is a challenge. Um, and obviously it goes without saying that uh, the exposure for all forms of NASCAR and, and, and candidly worldwide and anything that you do, I mean, diversity is an important thing. And um, I, I'm happy for her, um, and I think that it opens doors for, for other drivers uh, to have that same opportunity and, and make others realize that that opportunity is there if, if they go after it. And, um, and she's actually running at Pocono this weekend. Um, so I, I think uh, I think that'll be a good test for her um, to see where she's at, and because um, obviously the the mile and a half plus racetracks are, are something that will be part of your uh, part of your demands. Um, so I, I think that uh, a lot of a lot of people, including herself, are, are anxious to see how uh, how it shakes out for her. Lots of eyes for sure on Haley Deegan. Obviously, she saw success earlier this year at Las Vegas and as well as a win last year at Meridian. So looking forward to following her success. But Chris, thanks so much for coming on, talking to us, and uh, best of luck to you guys this weekend at Memphis and, I mean, the rest of the 2019 season. Thank you so much, and thanks for the time and, and allowing, uh, allowing me to come on. It's always an enjoyable experience for me. Awesome. We'll probably see you at a racetrack sometime here soon. Chris Wright, Canaan East, and West director, but when we return here on NASCAR Coast to Coast, we'll find out who found their way to victory lane on the local level. Wheelin designs and manufactures reliable and powerful warning lights, white illumination lighting, sirens, controllers, and high-powered warning systems for automotive, aviation, and mass notification industries worldwide. Every part of every Wheelin product is proudly designed and manufactured in America and is tested on site to meet the toughest industry certifications. On the road, in the air, and around the world, Wheelin is trusted to be seen, trusted to be heard, trusted to perform. Have everything you need for your next oil change? Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts and save on five parts of Castrol GTX conventional motor oil and a microguard filter for $24.99. Plus, earn triple O rewards points. Protect your engine with O'Reilly Auto Parts. Better parts, better prices every day. Limit supply. See store for details. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. Here's your chance to win a set of your very own Hercules tires. Go to HerculesTires.com slash MRN. Simply register, and each month we'll give away one set of tires. Hercules Tires has the value, selection, and industry-leading mileage coverage to get you wherever you need to go, no matter where the road takes you. Register now for your chance to win a set of Hercules Tires at HerculesTires.com slash MRN. Hercules Tires, ride on our street. Back to NASCAR Coast to Coast, brought to you by Whelan and by Hercules Tires. Here are Hannah Newhouse and Kyle Rickey. While NASCAR International and Regional was off, the local racing was still hot on track, and a couple of those drivers managed to find their way into victory lane, Kyle. 
like Gage Painter and Travis Swim as they split the twin late model features last Saturday night at the Hickory Motor Speedway down there in North Carolina. Stevie Johns won the limited late models. They are back this weekend with the Knights of Destruction on Saturday night. Grandview Speedway, Jeff Strunk picked up the uh, race win after three weeks of some bad luck to start the season. He's always a favorite down there in Pennsylvania. 46 modifieds were on hand to make the 29 car field. Mananox Speedway finally able to get a break from Mother Nature. Brian Roby held off Tad Pat Patnode to win the first sportsman modified feature of the season they're back in action this saturday night zeke shell picked up the race win at kingsport speedway and the the mark galloway 150 at evergreen speedway in washington was run this past weekend for the super late models and some familiar names in the top three those uh, of course were grayson raz who picked up the win holding off tyler tanner and Brittany zamora they're back in action this saturday night as well and we haven't talked about south boston speedway much they uh have had their weather issues as well as just not having any events scheduled, but they return to racing this Saturday night. And there's one more winner out there that I'm pretty sure I would never hear the end of if it didn't get a mention here on NASCAR Coast to Coast. But out at Meridian Speedway, they had their Bill Crow Memorial Race. And my dad, the old man still got it. John Newhouse won the uh, super late model race over Travis Milburn, a K&N West uh, retiree, and Daniel Johnson with his first top three. So... Dad, you've still got it, but the seat, you still got to hold on to my seat. Um, I'll come for that ride old one day. Oh, man, he's not even that old. I mean, he's still my dad, though, right? So I can call Although him old man. Although you call me old, so. That is true. I do call you old. I get it. Yeah, it's okay. Well, you know what, Kyle? It's all right. Every, everything's going to be okay. We're just glad you figured out Skype for this show. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Speaking of that, um, we mentioned that there was no racing this past weekend for NASCAR International and Regional. Lots to look forward to this weekend with both k and East, NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour, Pinties, and NASCAR Euro back in action. Fans can watch it all on fanschoice.tv. Are you making it to any of those races, Kyle? I'm not because I'm going to be at the Pocono Raceway oh. with the Motor Racing Network crew. We'll uh, have practice coverage on Friday and then the Xfinity Series race on Saturday and then Sunday, uh, the Cup race. I actually did think about driving back up to Connecticut, to Stafford on Friday night, because the practice session I'm a part of is early in the day on Friday. I thought, you know, I might be able to make it back up. But then I thought I got to drive back down after the race program, and it's like three and a half hours, so that probably won't be happening. That would be a long night for you. Well, I am not going to be at a racetrack this weekend. I'm going to take advantage of the warm weather here in Charlotte, maybe hang out on Lake Norman a little bit, but uh, – no racetrack for me this weekend. Indy, Indy wore me out. Enjoy the lake. Work on the hair. And I look forward to seeing you next week. I will. I will try and brush it and make sure it's better. But that is NASCAR Coast to Coast this week here on the Motor Racing Network. For producers Daryl Smith and Brian Yeswich, that's Kyle Ricky. I'm Hannah Newhouse. And we will see you next week here on NASCAR Coast to Coast on the Motor Racing Network. NASCAR Coast to Coast has been brought to you by Whelan and by Hercules Tires. NASCAR Coast to Coast can be found on MRN.com, Facebook, YouTube, or your favorite podcast provider. NASCAR Coast to Coast is a production of the Motor Racing Network. All rights reserved.